Who are they? I asked the girl from my Spanish class, whose name I'd forgotten. And she looked up to see who I meant, though already knowing, probably, from my tone. Suddenly, he looked at her, the thinner one, the boyish one, the youngest, perhaps. He looked at my neighbour for just a fraction of a second, and then his dark eyes flickered to mine. He looked away quickly, more quickly than I could, though in a flush of embarrassment I dropped my eyes at once. In that brief flash of a glance, his face held nothing of interest. It was as if she had called his name, and he had looked up an involuntary response, having already decided not to answer. My neighbour giggled in embarrassment, looking at the table like I did. That's Edmund and Emmett Cullen, and Rosalie and Jasper Hale. The one who left with Alice Cullen. They all live together with Dr Cullen and his wife. She said this under her breath. I glanced sideways at the beautiful boy, who was looking at his tray now, picking a bagel to pieces with his long, pale fingers. His mouth was moving very quickly, his perfect lips barely opening. The other three still looked away, and yet I felt he was speaking quietly to them. Strange, unpopular names, I thought. The kind of names grandparents had. But maybe that was in vogue here. Small town names? I finally remembered that my neighbour was called Jessica, a perfectly common name. There were two girls named Jessica in my history class back home. They are... very nice looking. I struggled with the conspicuous understatement. Yes, Jessica agreed with another giggle. They're all together though. Emmett and Rosalie and Jasper and Alice, I mean. And they live together. Her voice held all the shock and condemnation of a small town, I thought critically. But, if I was being honest, I had to admit that even in Phoenix it would cause gossip. Which ones are the Cullens, I asked. They don't look related. Oh, they're not. Dr Cullen is really young in his twenties or early thirties. They're all adopted. The Hales are brother and sister, twins, the blondes, and they're foster children. They look a little old for foster children. They are now. Jasper and Rosalie are both 18, but they've been with Mrs Cullen since they were eight. She's their aunt, or something like that. That's really kind of nice, for them to take care of all those kids like that when they're so young and everything. I guess so, Jessica admitted reluctantly, and I got the impression that she didn't like the doctor and his wife for some reason. With the glances she was throwing at their adopted children, I would presume the reason was jealousy. I think that Mrs Cullen can't have any kids, though, she added, as if that lessened their kindness. Throughout all this conversation, my eyes flickered again and again to the table where the strange family sat. They continued to look at the walls and not eat. Have they always lived in Forks? I asked. Surely I would have noticed them on one of my summers here. No, she said in a voice and implied it should be obvious even to a new arrival like me. They just moved down two years ago from somewhere in Alaska. I felt a surge of pity and relief. Pity because, as beautiful as they were, they were outsiders, clearly not accepted. Relief that I wasn't the only newcomer here, and certainly not the most interesting by any standard. As I examined them, the youngest, one of the Cullens, looked up and met my gaze, this time with evident curiosity in his expression. As I looked swiftly away, it seemed to me that his gaze held some kind of unmet expectation. Which one is the boy with the reddish-brown hair? I asked. I peeked at him from the corner of my eye, and he was still staring at me, but not gawking like the other students had today. He had a slightly frustrated expression. I looked down again. That's Edward. He's gorgeous, of course, but don't waste your time. He doesn't date. Apparently none of the girls him are good looking enough for him. She sniffed. A clear case of sour grapes. I wondered when he'd turned her down. I bit my lip to hide my smile. Then I glanced at him again. His face was turned away, but I thought his cheek appeared lifted, as if he were smiling too. After a few more minutes, the four of them left the table together. They were all noticeably graceful, even the big brawny one. It was unsettling to watch. The one named Edward didn't look at me again. I sat at the table with Jessica and her friends longer than I would have if I'd been sitting alone. I was anxious not to be late for class on my first day. One of my new acquaintances, who considerately reminded me that her name was Angela, had biology too with me the next hour. We walked to class together in silence. She was shy too. When we entered the classroom, Angela went to sit at a blacktop lab table exactly like the ones I was used to. She already had a neighbour. In fact, all the tables were filled but one. Next to the centre aisle, I recognised Edward Cullen by his unusual hair, sitting next to that single open seat. As I walked down the aisle to introduce myself to the teacher and get my slip signed, I was watching him surreptitiously. Just as I passed, 
He suddenly went rigid in his seat. He stared at me again, meeting my eyes with the strangest expression on his face. It was hostile, furious. I looked away quickly, shocked, going red again. I stumbled over a book in the walkway and had to catch myself on the edge of a table. The girl sitting there giggled. I noticed that his eyes were black. Coal black. Mr. Banner signed my slip and handed me a book with no nonsense about introductions. I could tell we were going to get along. Of course, he had no choice but to send me to the one open seat in the middle of the room. I kept my eyes down as I went to sit by him, bewildered by the antagonistic stare he'd given me. I didn't look up as I set my book on the table and took my seat, but I saw his posture change from the corner of my eye. He was leaning away from me, sitting on the extreme edge of his chair and averting his gaze like he smelled something bad. Inconspicuously, I sniffed my hair. It smelled like strawberries, the scent of my favourite shampoo. It seemed an innocent enough odour. I let my hair fall over my right shoulder, making a dark curtain between us, and tried to pay attention to the teacher. Unfortunately, the lecture was on cellular anatomy, something I'd already studied. I took notes carefully anyway, always looking down. I couldn't stop myself from peeking occasionally through the screen of my hair at the strange boy next to me. During the whole class, he never relaxed his stiff position on the edge of his chair, sitting as far away from me as possible. I could see his hand on his left leg was clenched into a fist, tendons standing out under his pale skin. This, too, he never relaxed. He had the long sleeves of his white shirt pulled up to his elbows, and his forearm was surprisingly hard and muscular beneath his light skin. He wasn't nearly as slight as it looked next to his burly brother. The class seemed to drag on longer than the others. Was it because the day was finally coming to a close, or because I was waiting for his tight fist to loosen? It never did. He continued to sit so still and looked like he wasn't breathing. What was wrong with him? Was this his normal behaviour? I questioned my judgement on Jessica's bitterness at lunch today. Maybe she was not as resentful as I'd thought. It couldn't have anything to do with me. He didn't know me from Eve. I peeked up at him one more time and regretted it. He was glaring down at me again, his black eyes full of revulsion. As I flinched away from him, shrinking against my chair, the phrase, if looks could kill, suddenly ran through my mind. At that moment, the bell rang loudly, making me jump, and Edward Cullen was out of his seat. Fluidly, he rose. He was much taller than I'd thought, his back to me, and he was out of the door before anyone else was out of their seat. I sat frozen in my seat, staring blankly after him. He was so mean! It wasn't fair! I began gathering up my things, slowly, trying to block the anger that filled me for fear my eyes would tear up. For some reason, my temper was hardwired to my tear ducts. I usually cried when I was angry, a humiliating tendency. Aren't you Isabella Swan? a male voice asked. I looked up to see a cute, baby-faced boy, his pale blonde hair carefully gelled into orderly spikes, smiling at me in a friendly way. He obviously didn't think I smelled bad. Bella, I corrected him, with a smile. I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. Do you need any help finding your next class? I'm headed to the gym, actually. I think I can find it. That's my next class, too. He seemed thrilled, though it wasn't that big of a coincidence in a school this small. We walked to class together. He was a chatterer. He supplied most of the conversation, which made it easy for me. He lived in California till he was ten, so he knew how I felt about the sun. It turned out he was in my English class also. He was the nicest person I'd met today. But as we were entering the gym, he asked, So, did you stab Edward Cullen with a pencil or what? I've never seen him act like that. I cringed. So I wasn't the only one who had noticed, and apparently that wasn't Edward Cullen's usual behaviour. I decided to play dumb. Was that the boy I sat next to in biology? I asked darklessly. Yeah, he said. He looked like he was in pain or something. I don't know, I responded. I never spoke to him. He's a weird guy. Mike lingered by me instead of heading to the dressing room. If I were lucky enough to sit by you, I would have talked to you. I smiled at him before walking through the girls' locker room door. He was friendly and clearly admiring. But it wasn't enough to ease my irritation. The gym teacher... Coach Clapp found me a uniform but didn't make me dress down for today's class. At home, only two years of PE were required. Here, PE was mandatory for all four years. Forks was literally my personal hell on earth. 
I watched four volleyball games running simultaneously. Remembering how many injuries I'd sustained, and inflicted playing volleyball, I felt faintly nauseated. The final bell rang at last. I walked slowly to the office to return my paperwork. The rain had drifted away, but the wind was strong and colder. I wrapped my arms around myself. When I walked into the warm office, I almost turned around and walked back out. Edward Cullen stood at the desk in front of me. I recognised again that tussled bronze hair. He didn't appear to notice the sound of my entrance. I stood, pressed against the back wall, waiting for the receptionist to be free. He was arguing with her in a low, attractive voice. I quickly picked up the gist of the argument. He was trying to trade from sick of our biology to another time, any other time. I just couldn't believe that this was about me. It had to be something else. Something that happened before I entered the biology room. The look on his face must have been about another aggravation entirely. It was impossible that this stranger could take such a sudden, intense dislike to me. The door opened again, and the cold wind suddenly gusted through the room, rustling the papers on the desk, swirling my hair around my face. The girl who came in merely stepped to the desk, placed a note in the wire basket, and walked out again. But Edward Cullen's back stiffened, and he turned slowly to glare at me. His face was absurdly handsome, with piercing, hate-filled eyes. For an instant, I felt a thrill of genuine fear, raising the hair on my arms. The look only lasted a second, but it shelled me more than the freezing wind. He turned back to the receptionist. Never mind then, he said hastily in a voice like velvet. I can see that it's impossible. Thank you so much for your help. And he turned on his heel without another look at me, and disappeared out to the door. I went meekly to the desk, my face white for once instead of red and handed her the signed slip. How did your first day go, dear? The receptionist asked maternally. Fine, I lied, my voice weak. She didn't look convinced. When I got to the truck, it was almost the last car in the lot. It seemed like a haven, already the closest thing to home I had in this damp green hole. I sat inside for a while, just staring out the windshield blankly. But soon I was cold enough to need the heater, so I turned the key and the engine rolled to life. I headed back to Charlie's house, fighting tears the whole way there.